Good morning, everyone from Dunrobin Ranch. You are looking this morning at our two wonderful ponies, Captain Lewis and Captain Clark, and our terrific wrangler, Anya. And Anya is going to be working today with my wonderful friend and a longtime friend and horse trainer and just an integral part of Dunrobin Ranch, uh, a man from uh, 450 miles to the east of us, in fact. He's sitting comfortably in his office, and he's going to be doing what we uh, call teletraining. This started uh, some years ago, and uh, the guy's name is Brandon Carpenter. Hi, Brandon. Hi, Suzanne. How are you this morning? It's good to be with you. It's good yes. to be with you. I, I just want to tell the audience, for those of us, uh, those of you who are new, that uh, I can't say enough good things about this guy. Um, I met him about 20 years ago when I had a, an unruly horse named Power, and he had Power. He lived up to his name, and he was giving me a tough time. And uh, we were at a clinic, and one of my friends said, well, go over and ask Brandon. And I didn't know Brandon from anybody, and he didn't know me. And so I go over there with my unruly horse, and Brandon agrees to help me, just like that. Really sweet guy. And I fell in love with him and his family and the way he trains horses, and he's been part of this program ever since. Well, thank you, Suzanne. You know, with inflation, those dollars that I'm paying you to say that are not going to go as far. So, you know, for, be that what it may. <laughs> uh, it's very, very kind of you. <laughs> well, I'm really sincere. And um, the other thing that is really unique about Brandon is what we are going to be seeing today is what we have uh, termed teletraining. And I wouldn't have started this with anybody but Brandon. Basically, he is on uh, Zoom. Our uh, wonderful Anya is out here in the middle of our arena with a Bluetooth cell phone and on Zoom. So Brandon is watching just exactly like you and I are watching the very same video, but he's going to be talking directly with Anya to give her coaching as she um, goes through all of the exercises with these two ponies. So feel free to ask a question. Uh, I've got my eye on the chat right now, and uh, Brandon will be happy to answer the question. But this was a technological challenge and a, you know, a challenge that I would not have even tried with anybody but Brandon. Um, he's got the patience, both with the horses and the people and the technology, and he just has a wonderful way of teaching people. So um, I really appreciate him walking down this road with me. Well, thanks, Suzanne. Yeah, it, it's, uh, you know, patience is a good thing. Some things I'm very patient at and other things that have nothing to do with people and horses, I, <laughs> I'm not so patient. But, uh, you know, if you give me an anvil and a hammer, I can uh, I can take those frustrations out and, and nobody gets hurt. But, uh, you know, we it, it's funny to say I got the technology. Uh, you know, I've, I've been dragged, kicking and screaming and scratching, uh, towards this and it's only because you know it, it's something that i can see that suzanne's vision is there and and for those that are, are joining us for the first time um she truly is a visionary and when she talked to me about this i i thought how can the world can this work um and she's made it work and it's been uh a slow improvements over time and we first started this at the uh fall of 2016 can you believe that I know it's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah, and it was it was very uh, it was rough. It was hard to uh, do things. We had a lot of delay uh, issues, and we still do, but not near like we did because you know those electrons don't go through these wires as quick as we think they do. So <laughs> it's it's uh, especially when you get cameras on on either end of it. But um, it has been a a challenge, but at the same time, it's been very very rewarding. And her vision that she came to me with. Uh, is has really, really made an impact on all of us, I think. And for some of those that uh, are the third party watching as well, it's been, uh, the feedback has been very, very positive and uh, a lot of fun at the same time. And there's some frustration because, you know, things happen and uh, people, hopefully they'll bear with us when it, when it does. And we just work through it uh, just like you do <laughs> kind of every day on this, on this ranch here. Uh, things come up that you don't expect and you just deal with them and then you just keep going and, and you and you prioritize and highlight and keep going. So uh, it's been very, very good, very fun. Uh, I basically got a computer sitting in front of me and a microphone 
And that's the extent of my knowledge. I can hook them up so we can do this. So I am, no, I am by no means any kind of a technological expert here. So I'm probably the least technology uh, based of all of us. And uh, it sometimes shows. So I'll sit there with that blank stare look like a deer in a headlight look when things go wrong. But uh, it is what it is. Well, the, the magic ingredient uh, in all of us, of course, is our wonderful tech guy, James. He really is the guy who, who makes all the technology move sm uh, so smoothly. But one of the things that I have learned from all of this, and I know that many of the people who've been with us all this time understand this, is when you do something like this in real time, as um, Brandon said, you don't know what's happening. Anything can happen. And I think that's the beauty of it is you know, when you watch a video that is pre-recorded, um, people get to put it up and say, And so what we're doing here is real life. I think it's important. Okay, Dave, okay. Did you connect with I think we got, uh, yeah, we got uh, Anya's audio is what we're hearing. We're hearing that wagon move along and we're hearing, there's a wave. Hi, Anya. She can hear us. She can. Uh... Good morning, Brandon. Good morning, Suzanne. I hope you don't mind that I unmuted myself. I thought I would let you all know that I've joined the party. She, she, she has good. made her entrance. Look at that. <laughs> well, very good. How are the two of you doing this morning? Very good. We were just we were just talking and kind of giving a little bit of background about what we're doing and uh, getting waiting waiting for you to kind of get ready to roll and all of our technical issues uh, sorted out, which are just nothing more than getting hooked up. It's it's surprising how much it does take to get everybody together and do this. It's not a it's not just flipping a switch. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And James just came out and helped me get hooked up here to the Zoom meeting. And yeah, it is. It's it's an endeavor, but it's so worth it. It's Brandon, it's wonderful to hear your voice again. How are you doing in eastern Montana? Well, right now I'm cool in the house. So uh, I, hope, I hope to get a bunch of work done as frantically and quickly as I can before it gets hot. And then it's uh, it's a lot of the busy workshop time that's hopefully in the shade a little bit, but it's uh, low, low to mid 90s today, and it's about 15 degrees cooler than it has been. We were at 109 the other day, which is brutal. Oh, geez, that yeah, that sounds awful. And you just don't work, you just don't work horses in that kind of heat uh, very much, or especially I'm, I'm training a couple uh, or one. I've got one left uh, right now on the schedule, so and uh, I'm gonna work with one of my own. But it's uh, it's not easy, and you just you can't make any mistakes because they're as grumpy as we are when it's that hot. Look at you go! Oh, absolutely, and I don't blame them. You know, it's I'm very thankful that we're here doing this extremely early today. Good boys, good boys. All right. Well, let, let's talk about this a little Come bit. On, have, have you gotten to practice a little bit? Well, um, for a half an hour here today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, no. So the short answer is no. I actually never got around to hitching up these two boys. So that is why I got a little bit of an early start here today. But James told me that you and Suzanne had been following along while I was harnessing up the boys and getting them hitched up here to the cart. So, you know, any feedback that you have. I still think my biggest struggle is that transition from once they're harnessed to getting them onto the cart. I'm yeah. just not great at driving them, you know, loose to get them hitched up. Does that make well, sense what I'm saying? It is, and I think what we'll do, uh, since we had some intro this time and, and uh, letting people know all who we are, uh, and we've kind of skipped over you a little bit, let's give you a little bit of, uh, of uh, the background in, in your life. Who is Anya? Oh, sure. So Anya grew up in Switzerland. Um, I was fortunate enough to grow up farming and with horses. I mean, you know, back in the 80s, I was riding as an infant, just tucked into the front of my mom's saddle. So I was very fortunate enough to be a horse girl pretty much since birth. Um, yeah, rode a lot in Switzerland, moved to the States um, in elementary school. Again, here rode horses. That's kind of when I made the transition from English riding to Western riding. I've ridden in most disciplines and 
um, the only thing that I do not have experience with is driving. So for those of you that are listening in, Brandon was out here a few weeks ago. Come on, Lewis, don't be lazy. Brandon was out here a few weeks ago and introduced me to driving a pair. And as Brandon had mentioned, you know, we either have a single horse or we have a pair. And then if we have three or more, that would be considered a team. So with Brandon's amazing instruction, this is where I've learned how to harness these boys. Here on the left, we have Lewis. On the right, we have Clark. And yeah, kind of getting the feel for them. And luckily, they know their job. So they're very forgiving with the mistakes I've been making, which has been a really, really great learning experience for me. Yeah, that's really, really good. And these guys had some time off, too. So they hadn't been driven in about four years, if I recall. Uh, but they're mm-hmm. very, very solid little little uh, pair. They're really nice, uh, uh, pretty even. This is this is what what people want to see as a matched pair. And these guys are are uh, identical. And when I was over there, I had to keep saying, "Okay, which one is which now?" I mean, they're that that well matched. And one of them had some braids in his uh, mane, and the other one was just loose. So I think it was uh, was it Lewis mm-hmm. that had the braids. I believe it was Clark that had the braids. There you so go. I can tell them apart. And let me turn their blazes to the camera. Can you all see their blazes right now? Yep. So Lewis's blaze, who, boys, who? Am I, which camera are we on? Are you seeing their little faces? We are. You're right in front of us. So Lewis here on my left, so that would be your right. His blaze covers his left eye. Well, his right eye, now I can't see. Either way, yeah, his, his blaze covers one of his eyes, and Clark's blaze does not cover his eyes. Okay. So that is right. how I tell them apart. That, that's a good way to tell it. Yeah, now you just got to remember which eye is covered. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, boys. So, so this is this is good. Um, and and a, for full disclosure, um, driving, I've been, I mean, I've been around horses my entire life, you know, riding before I could walk, just you know, sitting on a horse. Uh, same kind of thing, and uh, but driving is my is my least experienced portion of that. So I would consider myself a hack. I'm no I'm no expert at all, and, and I'm learning all the time. And uh, one of the things that is surprising about this is that there are so many different types of harnesses. So when you hook up a harness. It can be completely different. You may have a Britchen, you may have a Britchen and a Crouper, you may only have a Crouper. I mean, it's amazing the differences in that harness, uh, how it how it is uh, configured to fit the the horse or mule at, or even oxen. It you know, there's a lot of a lot of driving uh, done in, in a lot of globe uh, still with with some oxen or, or bovine, and it's. Um, kind of novel and it's not done very often and we've got a few carts here and a wagon and you know I'm, I'm getting done with this one horse and I'm gonna start putting some more of these horses in harness uh, to do some of the work we like to do but um, as you can see it is not as easy as just throwing a saddle on them stepping on them and go there is a lot more to this and it's a lot of a lot of time consumption and as you can see what Anya's doing, there's a lot of coordination there with these horses. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to work these guys every week and uh, build them up a little bit. Uh, they're very, very what we call soft or not in shape. So they, you have to consider or think about these guys as being athletes. Uh, you wouldn't go and run a marathon without just getting yourself prepared first. So you just run out and, and uh, decide to put a pair of tenny runners on that day and go. So we're going to build these guys up so that you'll get a little bit more speed out of them over time. And they'll do a slow trot uh, for a short time because you'll see a lot of these horses uh, that are being used. And there's a significant amount of, of driving really being done more, much more than you would think. And there's sport driving, uh, pleasure driving. I mean, there's a big, big industry uh, specifically on the East Coast and the middle Ohio Valley still uh, and a lot and I've got a neighbor here that's doing his haying with with uh, a pair like this of uh, uh, look like Percher and uh, gilding so oh, it's yeah. there yeah it's there it's around um, so it's not something that's lost it, it is it's not as prevalent as it was but it's it's there so we want to do that right we want to uh, look at how look at how uh, Clark is pulling a little bit harder. Lewis is kind of dogging it on him a little. There we go. Anya's evening him. Yeah, up a Lewis bit. here on the left. 
tries to Lewis tries to see if he can get away with being lazy and making Clark do all the work. So if you've noticed for the viewers, I'm often, you know, kind of slapping with the rain, slapping Lewis's butt, trying to get him to pick up the pace and do his share of the work here. Yeah, he's just a little bit on the lazy side, and I don't know whether it's laziness or could we say he's a little smarter maybe than uh, trying to <laughs> and not have to work as hard. You know, I've wondered that too, Brandon. I think he's just figured out that Clark will do all the work. Yeah, And that's as, right. uh, for the viewers, when I'm not here at the ranch, I'm a school teacher, and I equate it to group projects. You know, you always have those students that have figured out, well, I'm partnered with an overachiever, so if I don't pull my weight, that individual will do all the work for me. And I think Lewis has figured that out. So this is this is their school group project, and Lewis is trying to catch that free ride. Yeah, I, it, and you know what? I was in college, when I was in college, and you had a group project. I just hated those because I wanted I'm, I'm a same way type A personality overachiever, and you just want things perfect. Mm -hmm. You get you get a slacker, and they just make your work harder. Or and in some ways, yep. it's like okay, this person is is so lazy that. Uh, maybe listen, this isn't such a bad deal because the quality of, of work is not going to be there if I don't do it or myself or a couple of us that are of like mind. But yeah, so it's a, it's about making these guys um, do their part. I mean, we're not having them we're not having them do a lot of things that is going to show up a uh, product after the fact. It's basically the product is what they're doing in real time. So uh, you keeping him up like that is Absolutely. great. Yep, we're we're going to make him pull even. So um, what we'll do is. Um, we will talk about um, this time just some just some vernacular. And as you pointed out, uh, right now we have a pair. Uh, when you have one, it's a single, and when you and you can have uh, three abreast. Uh, you can have two, like you have as a pair, and one in front called a unicorn, or three abreast and one in front called a unicorn. And that there's different there's different reasons why. Um, you have them up there on a, on a unicorn that horse in front really is not there to pull they are there to look good and the two behind which is basically your your pair is uh is there and there's different different terminology for them as well but uh they're to look good and then your your wheel team is what you would have in a, in a uh, case like that you got a lead and then your wheel uh, they are the workers and so when you got three abreast, then you should have all three pulling evenly. It's, uh, uh, there's a, there's a lot more to it. So we'll, uh, we'll talk about, say, if you have four, what we call four up, which means a, a team, of, a, a true team, then you've got your lead and then your wheel and your wheel team is just like yours there. They're in front of the wheels. Uh, they're usually a little bit larger at them. Uh, of the of the size wise because they are the power behind it they're the motor that, that drives and then your lead team are your steering wheel that's the ones that, that uh, determine where, where you go and there's always almost always somebody who is dominant as in, in any horse herd and so you want your dominant horse in that lead team to really look flashy look nice be very very responsive and the others follow um if you have a team of six, so you got six, what's called six up. You've got a wheel team, and then the next ones forward would be the swing team, and then the ones in front would be a lead team. So, or a lead pair, really, technically, but the whole thing make up a team. Um, mm -hmm. Again, larger to smaller as they move up. Um, and what we're going to do is we're, we're just showing off what these guys will do for now. We're kind of getting a uh, baseline. Uh, you're, you, you talked about uh, Lewis being on the left. And what we would really call that is your near side animal. So your near side horse is on the left. And the one that's on the right would be your off side. So near and off. Near and off. Near and off, correct. And that's the same way as when you're saddling a, a think of it when you're on a saddle horse or with a saddle horse, you're usually tacking up on your near side, the side that you're most of the time doing most of your, your uh, uh, buckling of cinches, your buckling of your head stall, the side you stand on. We just tend to happen to do that. Uh, there's a historical reason for that. Easy boy. There we go. Nice. They wanted to move oh, out. That makes sense that, you know, near and offside. For a second, I thought to myself, how am I going to remember that? But when you made the comparison to a saddle horse, that made a lot of sense. Well, and, and if you think so of I'm it going this to, 
park myself over close to the hitching post. I don't know if you all can see Jasper, but Jasper is a little perturbed by what's happening here. I guess he hasn't seen the cart in a while. So I'm just going to slowly move over closer to him so he has an opportunity to adjust to everything that's happening here. And tell, uh, us who, tell us who Jasper is. So Jasper, he is one of our saddle horses that is getting ready for a trail ride with Miss Ashley. So he's at the hitching post over there, and he's being a little skittish. He's a little nervous, you know, looking at the car, like, what is this scary, squeaky thing? So I'm just going to park the captains here, let him have a look, get used to our presence. And then once he settles in, maybe I'll move them a little closer so that he can get accustomed to the squeaky cart, which, you know, hasn't been used a lot. So he hasn't had a lot of opportunity to see the cart in motion. And, you know, for Jasper, apparently this is a scary thing today. And you know what? This is a very, very good thing for, for uh, you to do, Anya. This is nothing more than a training technique. And she's doing a wonderful job. You're coming up to that animal with just enough pressure that they're curious. They get them used to it. You're desensitizing them. And this is a true whether you're riding the horse or whether you're in harness with them. Um, you want to introduce things to them. And this is a really good way to do that. Now, she... This horse Jasper could have went past this wagon uh, every day of his life for uh, several mm -hmm. years and not thought anything about it, smelled it, looked at it. But the moment something changes in perspective or context, all of a sudden it's going to eat him. That's just the way horses are. They're they're oh, a absolutely. Animal. Yeah. So this is this is nothing more than it's a great training. And you're and you're watching those like Ashley's tacking up and you're watching mm -hmm. where she's at it's all about staying safe too so very good here's a here's a and you know it's go ahead yeah and i mean with horses we just never know jasper is one of our calmest most steady horses and so it's, it's just one of those things today he decided wow this scary cart is going to eat me so yeah. we'll give him a minute to adjust to it ashley yeah. are you okay with it if i move them a little closer I'm sorry, Brandon. Jasper. What were you going to say? No, nope, I'm just gonna, just kind of uh, talk about the historical nature. Of this this is very very good. I like that. I like oh, the fact that oh boys, everybody's oh. talking to him. And look at that. He's like, what in the world? Oh, good boy, Jasper. <laughs> good, very good. What a good boy. And these are the things when people see horses that are very very calm oh. and nice. They don't see all that has gone into them to make them that way. And this is one of the things that mm -hmm. has to happen. For that for that to work and uh most people think oh this horse is just a nice horse well this horse is a nice horse because of a lot of work by several people you've got two of you really doing the work together you and ashley together are making this happen and and jasper is going to be like what in the world and look at him he's, he's just nervous but you know nothing's going to happen to him and you could inch that wagon forward just a little bit and watch him he'll do it again Make it make it like one rotation. And Ashley years. and who and who and Ashley did just mention that Jasper just came to us in 2019. So Ashley said there's a good chance he's never even seen the cart in motion before. Very very possible. Absolutely. So while we're while we're doing this and letting him get used to it, and there he's relaxing a little bit and coming forward. Oh, good uh, boy. The historical thing about the offside and near side of an animal is. Uh, as a teacher, how many how many of your students are left-handed? You know, what's the population of left-handed people in the uh, in the world? Any idea? Oh, that's a good question. I want to say it's less than a quarter. Don't quote it's me on that, though. It's whatever it is. It's pretty low, right? So mm -hmm. when you when we first started, we first started using horses and figured out we could ride them, and we used them as our modern day. Then it was a tank. You know, I mean, we could be much more mobile in our in our military. And that's what it was about, is about uh, conquering, uh, particularly uh, with mounted soldiers. And most mounted soldiers had a sword. When you pack a sword, you normally on pack left a sword hip. on mm -hmm. your left side because you cross draw that with your right hand because most of us are right-handed. So when you go to step onto a horse, you're going to put your left foot in the stirrup and swing your right foot over it and your sword will hang down. You're not throwing that sword over the saddle. So that's why we tend to work mostly on the left side of a horse or the near side, because that's where we're around them most of the time. So, and then the offside, I don't know where the term really came from other than it's 
it's just the side that's not well, the one that's worked as much. So near and offside, that's kind of where that came from. Uh -huh. So you know, I love are, little fun historical facts like that. Yeah, little fun facts that uh, you might win something on Jeopardy. <laughs> And what we'll what we'll do is we're gonna we're, we're gonna go through some of these these things and uh, as Anya gets better and as I get better, uh, you guys are gonna be coming along with us on this little ride. And we're uh, you know we're about 25 minutes into this, so we're gonna probably start to end it here and uh, uh, let you get back to work. But we're gonna do some things. Uh, we will cover. Um, maybe if, if people have questions, we can always cover some of those questions at the beginning of a, a, a broadcast. But we'll talk again about maybe one segment of harnessing, and then we'll talk about uh, carriage parts. Uh, why we have that? What's that stick up there in front of you that I see on the right hand side? Um, you know, all kinds of different issues that, that come up, and what we're looking for in our in our horses as we drive that as we go along. So we just wanted to introduce everybody and show the the two captains and Anya and Susanna myself and. Uh, I think with that, we probably will we'll call it a, a day for today and uh, get on with heat and work and more heat. Before Wonderful. Thank you so much, Brandon. As always, it's been a pleasure. And for our listeners and viewers, you know, if any of you have experience with driving, I would love to hear your stories or your input in the chat as well. You know, since especially since this is so new for me and Brandon also said this is not his forte. So if anybody does have knowledge that we don't have or have some input, I would love to hear it. Love that. That would really there's a lot of there's a lot of knowledge out there that's very valuable. Absolutely. So, yeah. All right. Anya, it's good to see you. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Anya. Take care, everyone. Thank you. I also wanted to thank you, Suzanne. Up. I also wanted to point out to our viewers that these are special little ponies because they aren't really full-blooded ponies. They are a cross between a Shetland pony and a halflinger horse. And a halflinger horse is commonly called uh, the world's smallest draft horse. So this uh, gives them a really sturdy body, even though they're small in stature, they have a lot of muscle and very good bone. Yeah, and, and the thing about these guys are what people don't realize, uh, pound for pound, they will out pull Clydesdales, the largest of our of our drafts. Oh wow, players. I did not know that. Oh yeah. These yeah. I, I have been to draft draft shows where they've had pulling contests and uh, the Clydesdales will pull up there around you know 70, 80 percent of their weight on a really good run. And and I may be off on that. But I've seen some of these small horses like this pull over 100% of their weight, like 105, 110% of their weight. Wow. Pound, they're stronger than the, than the big boys. Yeah. Very That's fascinating. I had no idea. Very cool breed of horses. Yeah. And this is very typical of their color. Both of these ponies have the color um, of their mother. They were across between a Shetland uh, uh, father's blood and a halflinger pair. And uh, this is very typical of the halflinger color. They remind me of little tiny Belgians. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That sorrel color. Oh, now we have the next like horse. Garnet is out here. He's now curious about the cart. Oh, boys. It's okay, guys. All right. Well, anyway, thank you, Kanya. Thank you all. I think it's really interesting that our horses are reacting uh, to the cart. And these are many of the horses that have come to us um, in the last four or five years. The, the horses that have been with us for a long time were accustomed to that cart. But as you pointed out early on, uh, Brandon, we haven't been using the cart the last few years. So these newer horses, this is clearly something that is outside of their experience yeah it, it, I mean, it shows but it's it's uh the noise the movement this large thing and yeah it's this is something completely outside of their uh 
uh, their the repertoire of what they've seen. So <laughs> it's good though. They're, they're doing well. They're still, they're curious. They're reacting a little bit as they should, but you know, they're not, they're not being really crazy. This is, this is just good training. Very good training because you know, and the truth of the matter is when you're out on a trail, you never know what you're going to encounter. You'll encounter somebody on a mountain bike, for example, making these same kind of noises, et cetera. And so the more experiences horses have with all kinds of different equipment, the more stable they are as a saddle horse, as a guest horse, because they become more uh, confident about facing new things. Yep. No, that is absolutely true. And you never know what you're going to run across. It's surprising sometimes what you see. So somebody has a question here uh, about how much weight can these ponies actually pull? Could you uh, take an estimate on that, Brandon? Oh, that's a very good question. Uh, you know, I don't know. Um, I would have to. I would have to look that up. It's probably based on percentage of their size. I mean, most everything you do when you're when you're packing a horse, um, and by meaning a pack saddle and putting a load on a horse, uh, that's a that's a percentage. You figure that you're going to have twenty percent of that horse's body weight. So if you got a thousand pound horse, they can pack two hundred pounds. Uh, day in and day out, most efficiently without uh, without hurting them or bothering them. And uh, so I don't know. That's a very, very good question. It's going to uh, depend on, of course, the size of the animal, uh, whether it's wheeled or whether it is a, uh, a sleigh, for instance, because uh, one will, will pull much differently than the other. And the uh, conditions, whether you're pulling on a, on a really nice groomed arena here, versus being out in a, uh, say a pasture where there's a lot of, uh, bunch grass or clumps. Uh, it's a, these are, these are wheeled with a, with spoked tires and whether you're pulling that with a, uh, inflatable, you know, a tubeless tire, one of our wagons has tubeless or two of our wagons have tubeless tires on it. So like a regular car tire. So it, it's going to depend on, on, I think some of that, but there's going to be a, a very good range in there. And I'll, I will find that out. I will, I will do some research because uh, I, I won't, I won't tell you. I don't, I know what I don't, I guess. Yeah. And in, in uh, uh, weight pulling contests, they have a very structured system. And I've seen this more for dog sleds than I have for horses, frankly, uh, for dog pulling. But they have, um, you know, they uh, uh, a set amount of friction on the surface and the and the type of conveyance that's being pulled, and it, it has to be. And they're very careful to to make sure that that's the same for each team that that does the pulling. And so you're you're absolutely right. Depending on whether it's a sleigh or if it's on gravel versus concrete versus you know all of those things make a big difference in the in terms of the total amount of weight that the that they can pull. Yeah, and I think most of that is going to be uh, kind of based on on their weight and a range in there based on, again, what I've seen on the pulling contest, basically been at like uh, at a fairgrounds on dirt. And uh, dirt is, is not easy to pull on. It's kind of like pulling in, into a plow. But you watch, you watch when they have, a say, a single bottom plow that is turning dirt. You can do that with a pair like this. Uh, of course, they're, they're larger some of our larger drafts like a Pertrin or Belgian, uh, Shires, Clydes, uh, you know, some, one, one of our larger breeds and they get down and, and, and scratch. And if it's really good loamy soil, hey, it's just, it's like, it's effortless to them. I mean, they're pulling into it, but it's not that tough. And you know, they're, they were built to do that day in and day out. So I'm sure it's, it's going to matter. Uh, the experienced draftsman will probably watch and see how they're pulling and how they're how they're struggling how they're handling they may uh, change a pair out uh you know midway through the day or part way through the day i know they, they did that a lot when when uh, my grandpas were uh haying or doing work with with uh draft horses like that for work they would they would change them out yeah yeah well, um, I have high hopes for our, our little uh, pair, Brandon. Um, those of you who are new to us will not understand, but Brandon was um, pressed into helping us create a stone boat <laughs> uh, for our, one of our single horses to teach him how to drive. And 
I now have plans for this pair of Brandon. And so I know that James is going to roll his eyes, but I have an idea of uh, <laughs> a rolling a chicken coop so that the chickens can help me pasture manage. They can help, uh, you know, aerate the pastures and by moving the chicken coop around the pasture. So stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, a chicken called a chicken tractor. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Put these guys to work. Well,